Hey, good evening, Facebook friends and family. This has been on my heart to do for a couple of days now, and here it is, Tuesday evening, 5 o'clock. Just as advertised earlier, I was going live at 5, and I have something in my spirit that I feel like is, maybe it's just the Lord speaking to me, but I really believe that this is going to speak to some people and help some people out there in Facebook world. And so if you're needing a turnaround, a breakthrough, this simple key, this simple truth may be just what you need to turn it all around. So if you need a turnaround, if you know somebody needs a turnaround, share this video, invite somebody to watch this video. If you can, would you like comment. Just let me know that you're here. Maybe comment where you're watching from. Maybe put a prayer request, what you need for breakthrough, or send me one later, whatever the case may be. But in this Facebook Live, I want to talk to you about the power, the power of a six-inch step. And so if you're watching right now, I want you just to verbalize that. Say the power of a six-inch step. And you might be saying, Grady Watson, what do you mean the power of of a six inch step. This is what I mean. A lot of people may not realize, but I actually had the honor and privilege of, 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 of actually playing football at Henderson State University here in, Hot, in, in Arkadelphia, Arkansas, here in the state of Arkansas. I earned a little scholarship, went there to play, played my freshman year, and then I, basically I took a year off and then I ended up coming back the next year because I realized I wasn't time for me to let go of football. And I thought it was, and God you know, said it was. And Anyway, I was young, didn't discern the time or what the Lord was saying. But So I came back after my sophomore year, went through spring ball my sophomore year, and began to play the beginning of that junior year. And there was a big change in the football team between my freshman year and my sophomore year. As my freshman year, we were primarily a passing team. like We threw the ball every down. We only ran the ball like two or three times the entire game. And so after that year off and I came back, we had a new coach, a new system. And guess what? We weren't a primary passing team anymore. We were grounded, pounded. We're going to run the football. So as a college offensive lineman, I had to get back in the groove of, of, of blocking, of run blocking instead of pass blocking. And I'd really become good at pass blocking my freshman year and actually earned a starting position. But when I took that year off and came back, the year off hurt me, and I so did trying to get back in the groove of this line, of this run blocking. And and I was small for a college offensive lineman. I only, was only six foot three, about 240, 245 pounds, which even at a Division II level was extremely small. But I remember this, that every day in practice, our offensive line coach that year, Coach Calais, he would have us do something. He would have us practice taking a six inch step. When we would get down in our face, in our in our in our stance, three point stance, put our hand on the ground, and we would fire off the ball. We'd practice firing off the ball as we had to learn to take a six inch step. Let me just show y'all right here. See where my feet are right here? When we fired off the ball, we couldn't take a step like this. No. You know what a six inch step looks like? Did y'all see that? Y'all like. Mr. Grady Watson, you crazy. What is this about a six-inch step? I'm going somewhere. I'm about to preach to somebody right now. See how small that step is? It seems like I'm not going anywhere. What's that got to do with this Facebook Live? I'm telling you because I couldn't move guys around. Guys were six foot five, six, six foot six, 270, 280, 290, 320, 330 plus. Guys I could not block, could not move them in practice. And can I tell you, that coach hammered into us that six inch step. And you know what I began to do? Is I began to work with time and consistency on my six inch step. I remember going to my college dorm room, y'all. And guess what I was doing? I was getting in my three point stance in front of the wall, taking a six inch step. I can remember standing in line to get into the cafeteria. And guess what I was doing? I would be standing there just like this. And I found myself just doing this. While standing in line, I was taking a six-inch step. And you know what began to happen once I began to master the six-inch step? When I got to practice, one day I fired off the ball instead of taking that big step 
or trying to do a big hit on the defensive lineman to impress the coach or trying to earn that starting position back. I just focused on making the six-inch step, and guess what happened? I began to move these big old guys that were bigger and stronger than me. I began to block them. I might not always overpower them, but I was able to get some leverage on them because of the six-inch step. What the six-inch step would allow you to do is to get your foot down on the ground to get leverage before they get their foot on the ground. Whoever was quicker with their step, the six-inch step was the one that would get the leverage. And even though I was smaller, not as strong, I mastered the six-inch step and got the leverage to move those big old boys and those big old mountains out of my way. What does that have to do with us? Some of you need mountains moved in your life. You need mountains moved in your relationship with God. You know you're struggling. You know you need to have more devotion time with God. Some of you are struggling in your marriage. You're struggling with your kids. You're struggling in your health. Whatever it is that you need, can I tell you, it's not the big things that you do, it's the small things that you master that begin to move mountains in your life. Can I tell you right now, if there's mountains, if there's obstacles, many of you right now, you feel conviction that you need to pray more, you need to do more for the kingdom, and you've You've tried to do this and do that and spend that hour in prayer that you've heard preached about so many times and then you never can seem to master that. You know what happens? You get discouraged. You quit and say, man, I just find myself. I can't ever have this relationship with God. Do you know what the six inch step might be for you? If you're struggling in your prayer life, it could simply mean that instead of waking up at six o'clock to start your day, you wake up at 5.55 and if you can be consistent with a five minute prayer prayer life for 365 days a year. Y'all, I did the math. That's 30 hours of prayer you spent in one year just by mastering a small six-inch step of five minutes of prayer. And guess what? If you can learn to master the five minutes in a year, then guess what? You can double it the next year. Then you go to 10 minutes. Guess what? That's 60. The next year you double that, that's 120. The next year after that comes to 40 minutes. That's 240 hours of prayer, and then you double that. The next year, you finally get that hour of prayer. Some of you, your your relationship with God is just that five-minute devotional life, like that six-inch step. If you can master the small thing, some of you, your finances could begin to turn around if instead of going to Starbucks for coffee, you'd go buy you a coffee pot, some Folgers coffee, and brew your own. I brew my own. I'm saving a lot of money by not going to Starbucks. Hello, somebody. You're Listen, listen. many of you are spending so much money on eating out and things that you don't necessarily have to have. You want the luxury and the pleasure of some of these things. And instead of doing that, if you take, some of you, your finances are messed up, but if you take $10 that you normally spent on an eating out meal every week and put that $10 in a savings account and do that every week, do you know, do you know that's $520 you've saved in a year that you would have spent on frivolous things? Some of you got a credit card bill that needs to be paid off. It's about 500 bucks and you never get ahead and you're just totally spinning your wheels because the interest is so high. What if you just took that extra 10 bucks or 20 bucks a week and put it on debt and you begin to break the stronghold? Listen, some of you may have a whole lot more debt than $520, but to begin to knock down either $520 or $5,200, you need to begin to take a six inch step and begin to chip away. Chip away, chip away. Some of you in your marriage, guess what? You're trying to, you have a myriad of problems. And sometimes you think it's the other person. And there might be some things the other person's doing that's wrong. But let me tell you, you can't get them to change. The only person you can change is yourself. And so if you begin to change how you are in the marriage, you actually begin to change your marriage. So maybe what it is for you to change your marriage is in the morning... After your spouse wakes up, you're just consistent in making up the bed to honor them. Maybe you husbands, to honor your wives, you'll pick up them socks and underwear. That, that, that's a small thing, but maybe that's enough to begin to put a deposit in her love tank that begins to turn. And it's not the only answer, but you got to start by being consistent upon those six-inch steps. 
It's a turnaround. The, listen, the turnarounds, the suddenlies in the Bible. Everybody talks about the suddenlies and the miraculous things that happen. And we wait for God to give us a suddenly, to give us a sudden breakthrough, to give us a sudden turnaround. But can I tell you that the suddenlies of God happen by the consistent daily action you take. It's you giving God something to work with. See, we want God to send the rain of revival, but we never plow the ground and plant the seed. God determines whether he sends the rain of revival, but he'll never send the rain of a revival to a land that is not first plowed and worked and seed that is planted. You've got to give God something to work with. Some of you are praying for God to heal your body. Well, guess what? God ain't going to heal your body until you quit eating eating those whoppers at Burger King. Hello, somebody. Listen, right now, I'm going to tell you right now, the key to some of your health, change it, beginning to change your health, is simply by drinking 64 ounces of water every day. Well, I don't like water. And I talk to people all the time that want to lose weight. And I said, I said, well, how much water are you drinking every day? And it's like, well, I don't drink water. I just don't like it. Well, if you want to get the weight off, you got to get the water intake in. And they'll say, well, I've drank that water before. I said, well, guess what? You drinking 64 ounces of Dr. Pepper every day ain't going to get you where you need to be in your health. You got to start drinking that water. It could be the turnaround for your health is that you could begin at the beginning of every day. The first thing you put in your mouth is not a Diet Dr. Pepper. It's not even coffee for you coffee lovers. Do you know what I do every morning before I eat my first meal, before I take in my first nutrients of the day, is I drink a big old glass of water. Because the first thing that you put in your body is the first thing you'll crave every day. And can I tell you, that small six-inch step changed my appetite. It changed my cravings. It helped me get healthy. Can I tell you, some of you, your turnaround is just by simply taking that six inch step and whatever the six inch step for you is, whether it's a five minute prayer devotional in the morning, where it's simply, you know, telling your spouse, some of you don't even tell your spouse you love them every day. It is not hard to, to, to vocalize a few syllables and say, I love you you. How much time that take? Less than a second. Could it be that that one second verbiage of I love you could be enough to give you a turnaround? Did you know if you hug somebody and hold somebody for 15 seconds, it has a way of relieving some stress and brings a calm to that person? Let me tell you, some of you are so busy, you haven't even taken time to just embrace your kids And all they need is an embrace and to hear, I love you. That 15 seconds of embrace where you don't let go. And they might even be older, like my daughter, 14. She's not quite the daddy's little girl like she used to be. And she kind of tries to wiggle out and get away from those things. Let me tell you, it does her some good for me to hold on because it does something. It can change how your kids and your family, listen, all it takes is that six inch step. If you can master the small things, Can I tell you, the word of God says that it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. It's the little things that you think that don't matter. And you know, maybe if you could just be consistent with one small six inch step in your life, that it gives God something to work with where he gives a turnaround in your life. So this is what I'm going to do now, is I'm simply going to take a six-inch step right now, and I'm going to pray a short 15-second, maybe not even that long prayer, that God would give you the grace for a six-inch step. So Father, I pray, whatever the turnaround is, whatever the breakthrough that is needed, that you give them the grace to be consistent with the small thing that you've called them to. Because God, if the small things don't happen, if the six inch step doesn't happen, the mountains won't move. So I'm praying that they'd be full of faith, faithful with the size of faith of a mustard seed, God. And it would move those mountains by their consistency in giving you something to work with. And I thank you for that grace upon their life that they'll be able to do this. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Guess what, y'all? I just preach to y'all, but man, God's been speaking to me all day about those six inch steps. If I can just be consistent and give God consistency in those small things, there's a turnaround in certain areas of my life and I'm believing God for it and I believe God to do the same in your life. 
God bless you. Love each and every one of you. Send me a message. Let me know what your prayer needs are. Share this with somebody who needs it. And I'll see you soon. God bless.